welcome to the Monday edition of Talking Football, where we cover all the events from the Spanish and the French leagues, and there's so much to talk about. With me here in the studio are football analyst Gav Borovic and I-24 News Marav Savir, who takes a look at all the reactions from the press. And on our show today, we cover the tight race between Real Madrid and Barcelona, while also looking at their fixtures in the Champions League semifinals. And in France, Paris Saint-Germain finally looks like the team everyone expects them to be. All this and much more coming up. Let's get started. We begin in Spain and with Real Madrid, who survived a tough test in Vigo, beating Celta 4-2. Nuav, this is the reason why these teams spend so much money bringing players that sometimes spend entire seasons on the bench. Chicharito made sure they qualify in the Champions League, made sure they win and stay in the, in, in, in the race. That's what they brought them for. For sure, every player has a purpose. There's a reason why they acquire those players. Chicharito is a bench player in Real Madrid, but it doesn't matter because when the big games, as you said, if he comes and scores in the biggest game of the year, the biggest games of the year, so it was well-deserved, you know, well thought of to, to bring this guy. The same with James Rodriguez, who's not a bench player, you know, is a big star, but scoring two goals yesterday, winning the game against Celta Vigo, every point now is crucial because they cannot two, lose points they anymore, cannot lose literally. any more points, exactly. They're two points behind Barca. They need to hope that Barcelona will lose points. Fascinating race between those teams, but as you say, as you say, those teams like retool, they restock, they have all those, especially Real Madrid, they have so many great players on their team. The only team I can think of in Europe that has as many talent, talented players is Bayern Munich, and uh, it's a very interesting race in Spain. But Barcelona is still in the driver's seat with two points ahead, with the three mega stars up front: Leo Messi, uh, Suarez, and Neymar, who are playing tremendously lately, especially. In Suarez and Neymar, we, we, yeah, we, very hard to say, but I still think Real Madrid are favorites, although they're behind two points, just because they're better. Interesting prediction that is, Marav. And and if we look at Real Madrid in the Champions League, people say, well, they got they got um, a Juventus the easier draw, not really an easy draw. A lot of expectations though in Spain for this. Let's remember 1998 uh, rematch of the final. And a lot of talk about it. We're starting with that Goal.com. Juventus versus Real Madrid is great news for football, and they're quoting Real Madrid director Emilio Butragueño, who believes uh, Juventus' return to prominence in the Champions League is quote unquote great news for football, saying. It's a very balanced tie, and we've played against them. They're very competitive, but Juventus is a legendary club, and quote unquote, it's great news for football and for this competition that they're returning to this level. And I'm going, it's been years since they've been there, so obviously it's great news for them. For Real, it's seen as more of the easier matchup. And then going to the Wall Street Journal, one of their bloggers saying, um, looking at both of the match matchups, uh, including uh, Barcelona and uh, Bayern Munich, but he's saying the four semifinalists have 21 European Cup and Champions League titles between them. Really, a matchup of the Titans in uh, the semifinals. I agree. And but talking specifically about Real and Juventus, uh, saying neither club particularly lit up their respective quarterfinals, so may actually end up being the more boring or the less exciting. Let's put it that way. Both matchups match are classics. As Merav explained to us, this is royalty. This is blue blood football. You know, Juventus against Real Madrid. You cannot think of two more legendary clubs in the history of the game. Almost. On the other hand, we have even more exciting match between Bayern Munich and Barcelona, the two teams that are playing the most beautifully expansive, attacking-minded football. You mentioned, you, mentioned, you mentioned Barcelona. Before we speak of the Champions League, let's, let's talk of what they're doing in, in Spain. They handle the pressure. Let's remember, they also cannot lose points. Even if they draw just one game, they may lose a championship. So far, they handle it. They handled it because Neymar lately is scoring a lot of goals. And then we saw this beautiful attack with Iniesta with the pass, Suarez and Messi scoring the second goal. Barcelona are not playing great football of late. They, they impressed against PSG in the Champions League, but we know that in Spain they're winning a lot of games without really impressing, as opposed to Real Madrid that are playing better. We even saw that in the game between those two teams. Real were better for most of the game, but still somehow lost. This is why it's such a close race, such a fascinating, exciting race, because those teams, as they are alike in terms of the stars and being on top, they're very, very different stylistically. And well, maybe we will see them facing each other one more time in the Champions League final. Maybe That would be the biggest insane. game ever. Mentioning the Champions League, we spoke about Real Madrid, Juventus, Bayern Munich, Barcelona, so much to talk about. That 7-0, Pep Guardiola, 
crazy story that is. Absolutely, and it's uh, it's a lot of hype. So we've both uh, they've been looking both to the past and to the future with this matchup in the press. Uh, ESPN FC Bayern and Barcelona Champions League rivalry has a new twist, and that of course has to do with Pep Guardiola that you just mentioned him and Thiago both going back to Barcelona for the first time, saying it's going to be emotional for them. And it's uh, the ESPN described it as a mouthwatering clash of the two FCBs. So it's going to be interesting. And uh, part Guardiola saying, I knew it would happen sooner or later. It's my first trip back to my home, Barcelona. I played there and coached there. I'm delighted and will enjoy the experience. It's a fantastic matchup. For Guardiola, I'm thinking of the possibility that he will lose to Barcelona. Think about it. For him to lose against Barca, his own club, not only losing to them, which will hurt, but also coming to Munich, having this tremendous team, winning the German championship so easily, but then being knocked out. Last year, they were knocked out. They were In destroyed by, by Real Madrid. Madrid. This time against Barcelona, now when when Bayern Munich get Pep Guardiola, they don't care for the German Championship. They can have, you know, they Tens can have. They need the Champions League. They can have anyone coach them and win the championship, but they cannot. They want to compete for the European Championship, for the most prestigious uh, trophy in world football, the Champions League. Now, if they don't get it, Guardiola Pleasure. is not good. I would agree. Now let's go back to Spain. And Atletico Madrid may be out of the Champions League, and they will probably not defend the Spanish title. But the Colchoneros may still view this as a good season. In a league that is completely dominated by the two superpowers, Atletico was able to establish itself again as a top team. And while the tough character and strong defense is what they are mostly known for, there's also another reason why this team is pushing forward. Liz Barenbaum and Benjamin Chong Alfares bring us the story of the French striker that is driving the Spanish capital crazy. The two goals by Antoine Griezmann this past weekend against Elche helped the French sensation set a new record. His third successive double proved that despite the elimination by Real Madrid from the Champions League, Atletico Madrid is still one of the strongest teams in Spain. The 3-0 win means the Colchoneros tighten the grip on the third place in La Liga and puts Griezmann in a place where no other French player has been yet. With five matches still left to play in the Spanish league, Griezmann already has 22 league goals, passing the previous record of 21 goals set by Karim Benzema three years ago. Griezmann is the top scorer for his team this season. He needed some time to adjust to the new position he was put in by manager Diego Simeone. Once he understood what his manager wanted from him, he just didn't stop scoring. I think Antoine Griezmann, from the day he arrived to today, has grown a lot as a player, and his goals in the league back this up. He's had growth in his potential because he's playing a different position than the one he used to play. He's a young guy with a lot of room for more growth and improvement. I think he's got a great upward curve, and I hope that for all the people who trusted him and love him, he continues to get better every day. Griezmann scored in all of Atletico's last five matches in the Spanish league, eight goals altogether during this period. 2015 has been a great year for him so far, with 16 goals in 16 league matches. No doubt that he's worth every penny of the 30 million euros Atletico Madrid paid for him last summer to Real Sociedad. And you have, let's remember the shoes Antoine Griezmann came in. Diego Costa, that's the man he came to replace, moved to Chelsea. A year later, it seems like no one, uh, no one misses Diego Costa as big as he is because the replacement is just as good, even better. Yeah, nobody's talking about Diego Costa. In Chelsea, they talk about him because he had a very good season, although he's injured all the time. But still, Antoine Griezmann, you know, I, I knew he was good. I didn't know he was that good. I didn't expect such a great season. We're talking 22 goals in the Spanish league. It's unheard of. It's a lot of goals. Is playing for a defensive-minded team. You know, we saw Atletico Madrid a few uh, days ago competing against Real in the quarterfinals, not really creating opportunities, losing at the end. It was heartbreaking for them. But, you know, a Diego Simone team will never break. Those teams never break. They always compete. They will not They're win persistent. the chance. Persistent. They're up there. They are so strong mentally. It's just unbelievable, unbreakable. The thing I don't like so much is that you don't really enjoy watching their games because there's not a lot of flair, not a lot of technical ability, not a lot of imagination and creativity, which are very important things in football. But in terms of personality, in terms of persistence, you know, perseverance, the best in the world. That's how they, that's how they got that championship last year and also made it to the Champions League final. Here are all the weekend's results from La Liga. Athletic Bilbao won 1-0 in Cordoba. 
No goals were scored in a match between Real Sociedad and Villarreal. Portivo La Coruña came home with a point from Malaga following a 1-0 draw, and Seville beat Rayo Vallecano at home. One more match will be held later tonight when Valencia host Granada. No changes for the top two, it's still a two-point gap. Barcelona hold on to the top spot with 81 points. Real Madrid are second with 79. Atletico Madrid are third with 72 points, and at least for now, Seville is in fourth place. The team from Andalusia has 66 points, one more than Valencia, who play later tonight. These two will probably fight for Spain's final Champions League spot until the end of the season. Now to France and champions Paris Saint-Germain may be out of the European competition, but on the home front, things look good, maybe on the way to a French treble. It seems like Zlatan's suspension, suspension has only done good for his teammates. PSG thrashed Lille 6-1 at the Parc de France. Ezekiel Lavazzi nailed a hat-trick, Edison Cavani added two of his own, and Maxwell was the one who started this goal-scoring feast on the first minute. The champions are looking strong, but their title rivals are not willing to give up just yet. Lyon were quite impressive themselves, winning 4-2 in Rennes. Visitors were up 2-0 as early as the sixth minute, Alexander Lacazette nailing his 26th of the season. In other results from the French League, Marseille are just a poor shadow of that great team they were earlier in the season. Marcelo Bielsa's side are defeated for the third straight time, this time conceding five goals at home against Lorient. Saint-Étienne can still hope for a Champions League spot after their 1-0 win over Montpellier. And Monaco learned that things in France are easier than they are in the Champions League. The team from the Riviera won 3-0 in Lens. Only goal difference separates the top two. Lyon and Paris Saint-Germain are both with 68 points, but PSG have a game in hand. That match will be played on Tuesday night. Further down is Monaco with 62 points, two more than Saint-Étienne in fourth. We should expect an interesting clash between these two for the third Champions League spot. Marseille is now down to fifth with 57 points. You have an interesting point here. Zlatan is out. PSG is doing great. Same thing against Chelsea. They knocked them out without Zlatan. Makes you wonder. <laughs> I, you know, I wouldn't doubt Zlatan so fast. I hope he doesn't. his agent doesn't hear me. Yeah, he's the great Ibrahimovic. He's their best player still. But when Lovetsi can pitch in, you know, with three goals and Cavani scoring, Pastore plays very well. Uh, so PSG, they have the talent. They should be champions in France. But as we said before regarding Bayern Munich, this is just not enough. For PSG to win the French championship, this is not what they Or play. even the French treble, which they can win this season. Yes, which is impressing to itself, but this is not what they play for. They play for making noise on the world stage. The world doesn't care so much about, about the French League. The world cares about the Champions League. And we saw, after beating Chelsea, it was very impressive without Zlatan Ibrahimovic. But going against Barcelona and losing twice in such a convincing manner, this is a big disappointment for PSG and Laurent Blanc. And I think that even if Laurent Blanc wins the championship and wins the treble at home, I think more than 50% that he'll be out the door because the ownership from Qatar want to compete to the, for the biggest titles. The biggest titles is not the French League. And Mirav, I have to ask you how the French is viewing this because we may come to a point if PSG wins tomorrow, they may open a small gap over Lyon. How is the press viewing this? Is, is, is this going PSG's way? Well, a lot of them are talking, hailing PSG or uh, Matuidi in Sportal. Matuidi hails PSG's best, uh, saying the 6-1 victory of Olil was the best performance in their League One campaign and going on to say that the players have kind of put the loss, the Champions League loss behind them, which is what helped them get this romping, the 6-1 romping. And the Guardian saying PSG romped the top with uh, Lavecci's hat trick against Lille. Also, both of them really focusing on the fact that they put this third consecutive exit during the quarterfinals from the Champions League behind them that they're really focusing on the League One campaign. Uh, may not be the best, but it's all they have. Exactly, but there's a huge gap between League One, 
you know, the French League and the Champions League, but they scored six goals, which is always impressive, against one of the best goalkeepers in Europe, Vincent Agnema. And, and, and three goals last week, which makes it nine goals in two games in, in France, a league yeah. where not a lot of goals are and scored. as opposed to Marseille, uh, where Marcelo Bielsa, their coach, saying about them coming to the money time, not having the energy, not having the depth and the roster, PSG are coming to the money time, at least at home, playing very well, being very sharp. But Lyon is also winning. Lyon is having an outstanding season, and hopefully it will be close till the end in France. Maybe it will not be enough for a championship, but it's great to see Lyon come back to such heights. Yoav Borovic, Mirav Savir, thank you both for being with us. We'll see you again tomorrow. And that's it for the Monday edition. Don't forget you can watch this and every other show on our website at i24news.tv. We're also on Facebook and on Twitter. Join us again tomorrow to look at all the events from England and Germany. Till then, thank you for watching and have a beautiful day.